Hi, I'm Patrick Taylor, and in this video I'm going to be talking about this. It's a replica military medal, which I did with my 3D printer. So this all started with my English teacher, who, amongst other things, has a fascination for military medals. And one day in class, he showed us this. It is a Peninsula Army gold medal, and these were awarded to officers in the Peninsula War in the early 19th century. Unfortunately, when you see the price tag of £17,500, you can understand why his yearning for it was to be somewhat unfulfilled. So, I thought it would be nice for me to try and print one off for him. It would be a challenge for me as well. So firstly, I had to do some research about the medal itself. And fortunately, the website provides some pictures of both the obverse, which is the side with the principal design, in this case Britannia, and the reverse, the name of the battle. So without really thinking about it, I set to work tracing around Britannia in Blender 3D in order to create a 3D mesh to print. However, it dawned on me that there was probably a less labour-intensive way to achieve the same goal. In the end this failed, but I'll describe it to you anyway because it's quite interesting. I had the idea to use a bump map. A bump map, in this case, is a picture which is laid onto the flat mesh. The mesh would be raised in darker areas of the picture and stay the same position where the picture was lighter. There were, of course, some problems with this. Firstly, the picture on the website was not great. Low resolution and lots of specular reflection from the flash. I managed to get a decent image of Britannia for the obverse, but ended up tracing manually the reverse side. So, after desaturating Britannia and blurring her to reduce noise, a mediocre height map was created. The process of applying this to the mesh may have been easier than tracing, but still took a long time due to the sheer number of vertices involved and various complex operations. In the end, this is the model from the height map. It is passable but not great because the shading on the picture does not translate to height in real life. Here is a test print I did highlighting the issues. After that hopeful but ultimately failed interlude of height mapping, I decided to do it the boring way and trace around the figure manually. And in the end I had a fairly decent model which printed well in my white plastic tests. Normally, setting a lower layer height when 3D printing metals achieves a smoother and better quality object. However, ironically in this case it did not. I think because my plastic flow rate is set slightly high, it spread out slightly and this was accentuated with the smaller layer height. Eventually, I opted for 0.05mm layer height when another problem beset me. I was changing my filament colour from white to gold in order to print the final version when my extruder jammed up. In the end I had to take apart the whole hot end in order to unjam it. But this was really only the start of my problems because when I put it all back together and tried to bring it up to temperature, it wouldn't. And it transpired that my heater resistor, the bit that actually provides the heat for the plastic to melt, had somehow short-circuited. There was no way of fixing this without ordering another one. The setback, however, did not come without its advantages. I ordered an updated heater and a smaller nozzle, 0.3mm, than my previous one, which was 0.5mm in diameter. And this sort of generally improves the quality of the print. So. After a weekend of constructing my new hot end, I could finally print. And here is a time lapse video showing you the final print. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you have any questions, please feel free to ask. Bye!